I've spent over three months with Lenovo Yoga Pro 9i. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about some things that I love, some things that I don't like too much that you should be aware of. And ultimately, I wanna help you make a qualified decision if the Yoga Pro 9i is the right pick for you. This video is brought to you by Asus ProArt Laptops, the laptops built from the ground up for creators. More information to come later in the video. Now, first and foremost, let's talk about the thermals and the fan noise. This is something that I'm actually quite impressed with. Now, what I did is I took a nine minute 4K clip, placed it into Premiere Pro, and then I exported it out on quiet mode and I had it unplugged from the charger. So it's running on battery power. And the export time took only three minutes and nine seconds, which is actually only a tiny bit slower than when it's plugged into the charger on performance mode. And that's a two minute and 17 second export time. So when you unplug it from the charger, you only lose about 45 seconds in the export time. Now, on top of that, we saw the thermals at about 47 degrees Celsius when we started the export. And by the mid range of the export, we saw about 64 degrees Celsius. The fan noise was even better. Only 33 decibels to 38 decibels of fan noise throughout the entire export. For me, this makes a fantastic on the go friendly video editing laptop. Now the battery life for video editing is about three hours and 28 minutes. So keep in mind that you got about three hours and 30 minutes of play to either edit and export or just edit, then get where you're going, plug it in and then export. So you have about three and a half hours worth of ability to work on this laptop while video editing. But the experience, the noise, the thermals, it's great. Now moving on to some confusion during my full review. The model I have is the mini LED, but I also had an IPS version. And so yes, there is an IPS version and there's a mini LED. So when you go to purchase the laptop, either on Lenovo's website or from Best Buy or wherever you're buying, make sure you verify the display that the model you're purchasing comes with because there are two options. Now also in the US, we can get the RTX 4050 or the 4060 version. The 4070 version is available in other regions. It is not available in the US at the recording of this video. So keep that in mind. And the pricing of these models for the RTX 4050 is about $16.99, but sometimes on sale for $13.99. Right now actually is the recording of this video, bestbuy.com. Check the links in the description below if you wanna see if it's still on sale. And then for the RTX 4060, it's gonna be $18.99 or on sale for $15.99. So some good pricing options for a powerful laptop. And again, if you use the links to make a purchase, I'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. So I'm so grateful when y'all use those links because it keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Now, the next thing I wanna talk about is the performance to value that you get with this device. Now, unlike other thin and light laptops with dedicated GPUs, they have not bottlenecked this device with a maximum graphics power. Not sure if you're aware, but something like the HP Omen Transcend 14 or the Dell XPS 16, those have maximum graphics powers of 65 watts and 70 watts, meaning that the maximum amount of power that the device will allow to be pushed to the GPU caps out at 65 watts or 70 watts. What that means is you could have an RTX 4070 in your device, but it is not being utilized to its full or even its high potential because of the throttling of the wattage to the GPU. This Yoga Pro 9i gets 100 watts of maximum graphics power meaning that you're gonna get a lot more out of this RTX 4060 than you might even get out of RTX 4070s. And so the price to performance and what this laptop is equipped with is fantastic. I'm gonna show you just a couple benchmarks since you can watch the full review if you wanna catch everything, but just, just so you can see here. This video is brought to you by the ASUS ProR P16, the flagship creator laptop from ASUS that provides on-the-go workstation performance within a beautiful and durable military-tested all-aluminum chassis outfitted with a pen-compatible 4K OLED corning glass display that is durable and color accurate. It weighs four pounds and is just over a half an inch thick, capable of all-day battery life for productivity tasks, and fitted with the ASUS dial to streamline your workflow providing access to your most commonly used tools. Equipped with the AMD Ryzen AI9 CPU, up to 64 gigs of RAM, and an RTX 4060 or 4070, this device is a powerhouse for architecture and 3D modeling work. And trust me, this is just the tip of the iceberg when looking at what the ASUS ProArt P16 has to offer. Check out my full review content within the playlist linked in the YouTube cards above or in the description below. Thank you so much to ASUS ProArt for sponsoring this part of the video. First and foremost, the 6K export from this device is 13 minutes and 28 seconds. 
absolutely fantastic. The 4K export is two minutes and 17 seconds. The 3D modeling benchmark, specifically Autodesk Maya, scores a 319. For a laptop at this price point with an RTX 4060, that's a crazy good score and incredible performance. So the bang for buck of this device is amazing. And the form factor, you have an all aluminum device, with aluminum top cover, bottom cover, and keyboard deck. You have a 3K display, you have a large trackpad, and bada bing, you have an SD card reader. It's fantastic. There's so much value in the Yoga Pro 9i. Now, in regards to this trackpad, it is smooth and quiet. Oh, it's so quiet. I love it. It doesn't have that loud clicky sound. Here's a quick audio sample so you can hear it in use. Now, one thing that I did notice is if I have the device set to performance mode, it occasionally will kick on even if it's just at idle. Or if I go ahead and start working around on a web browser and doing some research, I'll notice that the fan can occasionally kick on while doing some more low power tasks. And that is odd to me because this does come with the Intel Core Ultra 9 185H. So I'm wondering why a processor that's meant to be run on low power efficiency is giving me fan noise. So that's one area that I kind of noticed that I was a little annoyed with. I had to make sure that the device was set to, you know, quiet mode or battery saver mode in order to keep it quiet while just doing normal web browsing, writing a paper, or doing research or listening to music. Now, speaking of listening to music, you do have some upward facing tweeters on this device. However, your main speakers are beneath. And so the audio experience is really good, but it's not as good as it could be if these were main speakers up top and then supporting bass speakers on the bottom. So I'm gonna give you a quick audio sample so you can hear for yourself what it sounds like. Now, one thing that I don't love, and it's a pretty simple design choice, is the power button on the side. It feels a little bit loose, and this just might be the device that I have. It feels a little bit loose, and for me, power buttons on the side are kind of concerning, because if something were to get banged into it, or maybe it's in your backpack and something presses up against it, like I have a you know big metal fountain pen here, and if it were to get you know pressed up against it, I would hate for that power button to get damaged, right? Because that's like an essential part of using the laptop. So I would prefer, uh, and I do prefer regularly, when power buttons are on the interior of the laptop just to protect them. And so that's an area that I would say is a bit of a con for me personally. Now, the next thing that's a bit of a con is no pen functionality. So though this device is a touch screen, it is not pen compatible. And I think for digital artists, graphic designers, photographers, this would have sealed the deal for I think many, many people. Um, but it's not. And so that's why there's, there's other devices that if you are a digital artist, I would highly recommend checking out. Something like the Asus ProArt P16 or the PX13. These are devices built for creators and they have pen functionality. So if you're a video editor, 3D modeler, motion designer, then that's not really a concern to you. However, if you are somebody who finds themselves doing you know, graphic design, digital art, photography, that could be a turnoff for you. Now, one thing that I love about this device, and I really can't believe the price to performance that it offers, because it doesn't just offer a super color accurate screen, it doesn't just offer incredible build quality and materials like all aluminum, and great performance from a dedicated GPU, but it also has an incredible 3K display. So we have 425 nits of screen brightness at 100% sRGB, 90% Adobe RGB, and 97% DCI-P3 at a Delta E of 0.79. Amazing. In conclusion, after three months of using this device, I think it's one of the best bang for buck devices if you're looking for an aluminum premium build quality with a large trackpad, a great keyboard setup, upward facing speakers, 3K display, great performance inside of 3D modeling, video editing, Photoshop, all at a pretty solid mid-range budget. Now, this isn't a cheap laptop by any stretch of the imagination, but as I mentioned, I've seen this RTX 4060 model on sale for $15.99. Absolutely incredible. So don't forget to check the links in the description below for the live pricing. And if you do make a purchase, I would be honored if you'd use my link. Thank you so much. Otherwise, click or tap the screen here for more videos to help you with your buying decision. And I can't wait to see you all in the next one.